Hello. Hello. Good to see you. Good seeing you also. Dorothy, you're muted. And Lynn, you're still muted too. Hi, guys. Hello. How are you? Good. Good to see I just, you. I just watched okay. your minister's minute. Oh, good. Yeah, that's a um, good one. Thank you. A little um, provocative. I want to, I I'd actually like to hear more about that, but um, so maybe we'll just inspire others to go watch it and yeah, see good. what they think too. Sure. I, li I liked the end, yeah. something to think about. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. You've got the center square square on my screen right now, Lynn. So do I? Yes. I'm uh I'm in the top center on my screen. Oh, Isn't it okay. weird how that um how that works? Yeah. Hi, Candace. Hi. Here. Betsy's here. How you feeling, Betsy? Much better, thank you. Much oh, better. Good. It was a brief illness. Good. Are you home now or are you? I'm in Alabama with my dad. Oh, wow. So How it's long full on dark there? here. <laughs> is it? Yep. Uh -huh. What time is it there? Eight. I was just outside taking out the trash and saw Jupiter and Saturn. Very beautiful. Lots of good stars out here in rural Alabama. Wow. But what part of Alabama are you in? Uh, Lochapoca is the name of the town I grew up in. East Central, uh, Auburn. East Central. You know, Auburn University. Okay. Yeah, it, that's very pretty country. I, I have a distant cousin that lives uh, sort of central, central Alabama, just really mm -hmm. quite beautiful. Thank you. I enjoy it. Yeah, it is very nice. Very nice. When do you coming home? Um, I was going to come home on Friday, Lynn, so that I could be there for the retreat on Saturday, but dad's got an infection so i'm not quite sure yet that i'll make it okay well understandable certainly gosh and i'm you know we have i would be on the video but it would be distracting to y'all because i'm having to do this meeting on my phone not a uh advertisement for rural alabama we've been without internet all day today i don't know what's going on Oh, mm -hmm. it's not normal even for here, <laughs> but all day, no internet and it's still out. So I'm just kind of holding my phone. Well, you're coming across really clear. So good. That's good. kind of good. Yeah. Good. Sometimes I guess that's what's most important. Well, that's Verizon. So. Yeah. Oops. Sorry, guys. I better let me see what's up. You know, at um, one of our last bylaws meetings, guys, um, Susan Greenewald came to my door. You, do you know, you, some of you know who Susan Greenewald is. She's a member of our church. And um, my dogs went crazy. And I, I knew the dogs were barking, but I had no idea that Susan came to visit my mister. <laughs> I live a block away from the Flying Goat Pizza Parlor. So every once in a while, somebody goes to pizza and then Mosey's on over. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. <laughs> okay, so I don't think there's anybody from church coming to see me right now. So let's go ahead and call the meeting to order. I think, are we still, we're still missing, is everybody, Catherine's not here yet. I don't Craig. see Craig. And Craig's not yeah, here. Craig and Catherine. Okay, well, maybe we'll give it a couple more minutes. So what's your pizza budget like? Lynn. <laughs> oh, it's very good now. It used to be really bad, but I've, 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 I've had to um, get a grip on myself, actually. So, yeah, it used to be. It's dangerous. 
because um, dangerously good. I love. Oh, them. so oh, good. God. And Pete's is Pete's Pizza cal Calzones are right down the street. Uh huh. And then the Down River Grill is right down the street. And I took my uh, sisters there, it's, and I hadn't been there in years. The Down River, and it is still really, really, really good. Yeah, they have a really nice menu. Mm hmm. Burger Wednesday, which I don't do anymore so much either. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking to us or are you talking to yourself? <laughs> I know both. <laughs> so I, can't, I see Catherine's joined us. There's Catherine. Hi, Catherine. Hello, I'm here. Give Craig one more minute and then, then we'll go ahead. Okay. He'll join us, I bet. Well, why don't we go ahead, guys? I think, um, oh, there he is, yay, just in time. Hi, Craig. There he is, <laughs> he's got his hat on. Can no you hear kidding, me? hat. Can you hear us okay, Craig? Uh oh <laughs> can you hear us, Craig? I don't think he can hear us. Mm. Yeah, I don't think he's hearing. It looks like he's on his phone, doesn't it? He's muted. I see he's muted. Let me put in the chat. Craig, you're muted. Oh, he, he probably won't be able to. See. No, I just finally got audio. Oh, yep. okay. Hi. okay. You, you can hear us okay now? Yeah, now I'm I'm actually in and going. Yeah. Okay, great, great. All right, guys, let's call the meeting to order at six o six p.m. And um, any any changes or amendments or anything um, related to the agenda that we need to. Any amendments? No changes. None here. Okay, hearing none, we're gonna just adopt the agenda as it sits or as it stands, I guess. And then um, any amendments or corrections to the uh, minutes from August 25th meeting? I think there was only um, my one little mistake at the very end when I said um, that this month's meeting would be September 22nd, which it should have been, and then um, space that out for the fourth Wednesday of the month, should have been last week. So if we could just change that, Dorothy, on the, on last, on the minutes, okay. But I, I thought everything else was fine. So any, um, any objections to just adopting those minutes or approving the minutes as they are with that one correction? Yeah. Okay do that. All right, um, let's go to Todd uh, for our opening words. Okay. These are uh, some opening words that when I was at Clifton Unitarian Church were, were very significant. Uh, for the first several years I was there, they had said these words as part of their ritual every Sunday. And eventually we stopped, but we kept them uh, written on the front of the order of service. And, and it's actually uh, a covenant. And, and the reason I think it qualifies as an actual covenant is because it's said by people to each other every Sunday on a regular basis versus maybe uh, the idea of a covenant is somebody, something somebody tells you, you, you know, you're responsible for upholding even though you never promised it. But this is a very sweet little covenantal statement that I think gets at the heart of what all Unitarian communities are really about. Love is the spirit of this church and service is its law. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love 
and to help one another. That's nice. Thank you, Todd. Okay, um, the next thing on our agenda is um, the president's report. So that's me. Um, so uh, I am thrilled because this agenda is actually um, pretty much all the things that are going to help us move forward in our bylaws workshop. So um, usually my president's report this whole year has been about our bylaws workshop because that's been our main focus. So, um, so that's what we're still working on. That's what we are still focusing on. That's what we're still doing uh, every Monday, except for this past one, uh, because of um, the last few things that we really need to do before we are ready to start planning what we're going to do and how we're going to roll out um, um, informing or um, helping the congregation see what we've done, um, we, we, need to, we needed to talk about some of the things that are on this agenda tonight so that we can then go back into our bylaws workshops and, and complete that. So I'm looking forward to the rest of this meeting and getting um, going on those things. The other two things I wanted to say, and I should have started with this, I just wanted um, to say one more time, congratulations to Todd for his 10 years um, in, the service, in, our, in the service as our minister. And, um, and I also wanted to particularly recognize and thank Candace um, for her plans, planning of the, the ceremonies that took place uh, at church on Sunday and um, the lovely um, table spread. And I know that a lot of work went into that and thought went into that and certainly being sneaky with gifts. And, um, and that was really fun. So um, I think everybody really enjoyed that, Candace. So thank you very much for your work in that. And I think Sue Sturitz was your partner in crime for that. Yeah. Yes. So that was lovely. Yes. Couldn't have done it without her. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to talk about is just to let the congregation know that we're finally um, going to have our board retreat um, that's typically done pretty early on after a board, a new board is elected. But, um, but we had to push that back this year for multiple reasons. So we are meeting um, at the Eckloff household this Saturday from 10 to about two in the afternoon. And um, we won't be making any board decisions there, but we will be finally getting an opportunity to kind of come together. Typically we'll do a little bit of um, policy governance um, discussion and learning um, and um, maybe be thinking about priorities, but I don't think we set any um, agendas or make any big decisions at, at such a, an event, but we're looking forward to that. So that is pretty much it for me from the president's report. Um, Todd, it's time for the minister's report. Well, I, I will piggyback on, on what you said. I, I too want to thank uh, you for the uh, wonderful celebration on, on Sunday. And, and uh, it was very special. Lynn, I appreciated your, your uh, very special words and, uh, uh, Candace and Sue and everyone who helped organize it, uh, the, the thoughtfulness and, and love that went into it was, was very much appreciated, a as was the, uh, the sentiments from everyone in the congregation. I just so appreciated it. And uh, the, the plaque is now hanging in my office, the beautiful plaque. And, and, uh, and this guy has been hanging out with me as, as we try to figure out exactly what he's about. He's, he's still trying to figure out <laughs> You know, who he's going to be in life a bit of a smart ass aren't you well that's what you say <laughs> I, I do say it because uh, that's how this thing works but anyway uh, <laughs> he's he's been uh hanging out with me we're getting acquainted i've, I've really enjoyed that is there, is there any chance he could be a gadfly i think he is a gadfly very definitely yeah Griffiths Gadfly. <laughs> I now yeah. need Griffiths Gadfly. <laughs> I like it, yes. <laughs> uh, and and uh, 
I, I also very much looking forward to having the board uh, board retreat at our home. That's something uh, I've traditionally done uh, since since uh, I've been here, and and it's very nice. Uh, time we we did not do it for the past two years the the the, the board two years ago didn't didn't want a, a retreat or, or any sort of uh, you know, orientation and then last year of course because of covid we were we weren't able to really uh, meet in person so it's it's nice to be able to get back together in person uh, on this rare occasion and, and and have you guys in our home so we're looking forward to that We'll, uh, I'll probably have, you know, coffee and tea and, and some, uh, some light, uh, like bre breakfast type, type stuff, you know, really junk food, uh, bagels and donuts like stuff, muffins, whatnot. Uh, and then we'll, and then we'll provide lunch too. So don't, don't worry about bringing anything. Uh, do let me know if you have any dietary needs. And then I, uh, m most of what I, uh, uh, what what I would say would be redundant of of what what Candace is going to say in her report, so I won't I won't go into any details about anything because she always does such an excellent job of talking about what we're up up to at the church operationally. What I did want to talk about just briefly is uh, is our our attendance on on Sundays. Uh, a, a lot of folks, you know, not a lot, but but more than more than a handful have said. Uh, geez, you, you know, you must be disappointed by the, uh, by the attendance, you know, such small crowds. And, and I say, no, I, I'm, I'm actually, you know, uh, very pleased with the, with the attendance because we are able to track the number of folks that are joining, uh, joining us via our stream. And so uh, we, we've had good attendance throughout COVID uh, on our streaming service, and, and we still have a lot of folks streaming. So we, we actually so far have, have always had more people streaming than are in person. Uh, so last week, for example, we had about 100 people in person, uh, both services, and more, more about uh, just over 100 different URLs uh, signing on for our live stream. Now, we have no idea of, uh, of knowing how many people are watching uh, Per URL, right? We could we could very much have uh, uh, you know a couple a lot of couples watching. So I, I you know I would translate that conservatively that hundred and and uh, hundred hundred different people logging in to you know a hundred and thirty people would be very conservative. My guess is it's more like one hundred and fifty. So that that really puts us on par with with our our usual attendance. Uh, on on Sundays, even even before uh, the Gadfly affair and before. Uh, before COVID. So I just wanted to help folks remember that, that uh, you know, we are still in the midst of, uh, of a pandemic and a lot of folks are not comfortable coming to in-person services. And so they're continuing to come online, but we are, we are having good attendance and I, I consider it on par with the kind of attendance we're, we're used to having. And I, I would also say that even during the uh, the terrible controversy we experienced prior to the to the pandemic, our, our numbers did not go down. <laughs> if anything, they went up. So uh, I think we're in good shape there. And I just wanted to give you. I've probably talked about this before during uh, these these check ins, but I I think that it's uh, important for you to at least hear my perspective on it. So that's my report. Thanks, Todd. Is there any way for us to tr also track? Um... I know for me, sometimes I miss even streaming, but I, but I try always to go back and, and, and keep up <laughs> and look back. Is there a way to see views? Just like yes. you could, you, we can see how many views even like a week or so later after a service. Yeah, that's, that's true. We sure can. And, uh, you know, we, we don't, I, I don't think Candace, do you remember that is actually not something that's on our ops team report when we look at it, is it? Uh, I, I'm just looking. Oh, it is, it is. You mean how many are streaming? No, how many How many have watched it during the week, have watched the recording? Uh, uh, no, it's not on the ops team report, not. no. That's actually a good, a good thing to track. Uh, we probably wouldn't be able to, to get it, you know, for the Sunday prior 
but it might be interesting to uh, you know have that in, in at least one of our operations team meetings minutes. How many people have have watched the recordings during mm -hmm. during say the month or the prior two weeks or something? So, uh, Candace, maybe you can help me remember that, but we'll, we'll try to bring that up with Rebecca. No, and see no. that's something that's that's easily uh, incorporated into our report, so we we have that number. But that that's a really good point. Lynn, because that's that's another whole component of folks who who feel like, hey, I don't, I can always wait till tomorrow or until absolutely. Later in the week. So yeah, yeah, Sunday's not such so perfect for everyone anymore. Yeah. So yeah, I'm one of those that's always playing catch up too. So <laughs> often I'm playing yeah. catch. up. Yeah, it's actually kind of fun sometimes because you hear talk about the sermon or the service. And it's like, oh, goody, somebody will say something like they'll say, have you seen, did you see the service? I'm like, oh, no, I haven't yet. Okay, good. I'll go, I'll go check it out. So, so there's that whole, I mean, there's all kinds of, um, you know, butts and seats doesn't mean so much anymore as it used to. We say that right. all the time in, in classes in our, uh, for attendance at school now too. So. Yeah, yeah that's true. And, and there will, there will be some folks uh yeah i don't know how many but some folks just never will come back on a regular basis yeah. they've they found that you know this is very convenient i i enjoy being able to stay home in my pajamas and attend the service online and so we 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 uh, i guess some folks have shifted to that on we'll, we'll we'll stay in that uh, that habit from now on yeah great okay well thank you all right, um, so that moves us to Candace for the operations team's report. Okay, I have five items. Um, the church's second paycheck protection program loan, PPP loan, of $42,720 has been forgiven as of September 10th of this year. The amount includes the interest garnered for a, a grand total of $42,918.97. Um, number two, the team decided that UUCS will be a sponsor for the drive through Spokane Pride Parade at the $100 level. The parade will be held on October 9th. A new security system has been installed for the back of the church building uh, with a computer monitor relocated to the front of the closet located by the kitchen. Um, the church's business account credit card has been transferred from U.S. Bank to STCU and is now active. And lastly, it was agreed by the team to ask Marion Hennings to serve as an ops team member for the next two years. She has indicated she's willing to serve in this capacity, and the team now requests that the Board of Trustees officially ask Marion to serve on the ops team per our policy documents. Well, that's wonderful. Too bad she's not here. She's often here. We could ask her right now, but she, I don't see, unless I'm missing somebody, I see 16 people here and 16 faces. I don't see Marion. Okay. Well, I, um, I'm assuming that would be something I would do. I'll um, reach out to Marion and- Well, she, she's or, already agreed. So oh. really all you'd have to do is, is ratify the decision or, or, uh, or, or appoint her however you want to do that through a motion at some, some oh, point. Oh, so we so. just need to have a motion and say, that's what we're, we, we agree to that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Unless, unless there's any, you know, issues that you need, need to go into an executive session to discuss, but. Uh, you can, you can do that simply by saying, is there any objection? And then you are proving it. Lynn. Oh, great. Okay. Are there any objections to having Marion Hennings serve on the operations team? Hearing none and seeing Betsy clapping, I would say that um, we would all approve of that. So yes. wonderful, that's wonderful. Great, thank you so much. I, I will let I will let her know that she's she's official. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, Candice. Um, yeah. So next on our list, um, Karen Dorn Steele is here with us tonight, and she, as she was last month, and um, she has agreed to um, uh, explain and to um, share with us the mission statement that the endowment team has uh, developed. So I'll turn it over to Karen. 
Thanks. Thanks, Lynn. Yes, we've been talking in our uh, recent meetings about um, the um, endowment team's lack of a mission statement. You know, there's lots of wording in the current bylaws about, uh, about the endowment team, but we thought it would be best to have a mission statement that could either be used in the bylaws or at least for, for other purposes of the church. So we, um, we formulated one, discussed it, and voted on it at our last meeting on September 9th. And yeah, I think you have copies. Do you want me to read it? Or what, what I think that want? would be really great if you did. I don't think it, it's not very long. So it's not very long. No. no. Okay. And it's very purposely um, general, but uh, but is reflecting our you know what what our overall or overarching goal is. The mission of the UCS endowment team is to achieve positive long-term investment results for you for the UUCS compatible with the values of Unitarian Universalism. The endowment team will strive to achieve returns within a moderate risk tolerance, which allow the church to take regular distributions and maintain the value of principle after adjustment for inflation and after all expenses. The endowment team shall use an independent third party to achieve the funds investment goals, which will include socially responsible investments. Well, that's it. Great, great. Um, Any questions? Or? Yeah. Do we should we send a copy of that to Dorothy? Dorothy, would you like me to just? Okay, I'll I'll forward that to Dorothy. Okay. And then, yeah. Are there any questions? Or um, thank you so much for doing that. That does help us clarify. Um, the endowment section of our bylaws was is one of the ones that is um, is one of the bylaws that we are um, I wouldn't say we're struggling with it, but we wanted to gather some more information um, about mm -hmm. sort of how the bylaw or the endowment team um, works. And so that is um, super helpful and just being informative for us. Yeah, Dick. So so one one thing that I would uh, point out from a logical point of view, uh, you read the, the wording, and I think it's a nice mission statement, and I, 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 I'm, I'm very pleased with the way it came out. Uh, what it does is it uh, establishes the mission statement of the endowment team. Uh, it didn't, doesn't address what the purpose of the, having an endowment is, and so that is, uh, which is not identical to the mission of the endowment team, all those, those things would be uh, related uh, in a properly organized world. So that might be something that we want to look at when we go back to the bylaws and uh, look at that section on uh, section, I think it's what, section 11? The endowment. 11. Yeah, we're, we're, endowment. Weren't we also going to hear about um, what, the, what the founders organization had to say about their thoughts? Legacy that... Society has had a meeting, but it was just recently, wasn't it? Just, I don't know if you wanted was, was, to speak about It was about Sunday that. evening. It was Sunday evening, and we did uh, uh, send uh, give everybody. There were um, nineteen people there, so it was pretty good attendance. And we did two things: we passed out a questionnaire about, you know, what's why do you contribute? Um, what's your long term vision vision for the church? And what is your position in uh, on either staying with the UUCEF in Boston or withdrawing and establishing a local fund in Spokane. I've been tabulating that. And of the people who were there, of the 19 people, um, 18 of them want to withdraw from the UUCEF and one was uncertain. We're also, there were legacy society members of probably about 10 or 12 that weren't, who weren't there. And today we sent out questionnaires to them, giving them one week to reply. So in a week, I'll have a full tabulation uh, from the Legacy Society on, on those questions. We also have the answers of the, many of them are long, long time members who've contributed for years. And, and we, can, we can provide their comments and reflections to you in any, any form you'd like. We could send maybe a little separate report to the board on what was said and what the ta final tally was. Would that be something that we could then, um... I mean, when would that be, Karen? Do you think that would take a while for you to get I don't that? think so. We've given them one week, uh, the additional people, one week to reply. And okay. I have all the other, uh, so certainly before the next board meeting and I, at, at the next board meeting, 
the, the team does uh, plan to make its recommendation to the board about the UUCEF issue. So you could have both of those things by the next board meeting. Okay. Great. Karen, Karen, would it be possible for you to send the mission statement to all of the board members? Oh Please. yes, I did. I sent them to Lynn. I uh, so okay. maybe you. Yeah. I'm I sorry. You know what, yeah. you guys? Here's the my to do list. On I have about 60 <laughs> post-it notes, and I'm a mess this week. And I was okay. supposed to email everybody to um, tell them that there was no bylaws workshop on Monday, and that didn't get done. So I, I'm a mess, and and I um. I will get that sent out to everybody and include that to Dorothy too. So my apologies for that. Um, so yeah, I think that would be super helpful, Karen, um, okay. to, to have that data compiled. Can I ask a question? And then I see your hand, Tom, one more question. Um, so a legacy society member is a person who has um, contributed at all, or have they contributed at a, at a certain level, or how does one become either, a legacy society? Either, there are people who have either contributed $1,000 or more to the endowment, or people who have put um, the endowment in their estate documents. I see. Uh, okay. They you know, have a specific request to the church in their estate documents. And how many legacy society members do we have? Uh, we have about um, 25. About 25. Yeah. Now I'm not. I'm not certain about that number, but it's about 25 because I have an older list, and some of the people have, have either died or have left the church. You know, as part of the group sure. that left in 2020. So, uh, but it looks to me like there's about 25. Okay. So not very many people missing from your no. um, from your gathering. No. That's great. Yeah. Great. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Okay. Um, question to Karen. Um, boy, I'm, I'm just trying to recall, but it seems like there was a second question on that uh, on that questionnaire um, that seemed yeah, to address were, the use or purpose. Was, do, you, do you have any there comments? There were two. On that? One is why do you contribute, or why have you contributed to the uh, Legacy Society or to the Endowment Fund? And the second is what is your long term vision for the church? Okay. Do you have any results at this time on that, or is that still compiling? We have we have the we have the results, but I'm just waiting for, for those final people um, to reply so that we can so so that we've given them a week. So next week we'll have it, and then I can send a full report on what everybody said, not just the people who came to Dick and Judy Gammon's house on Sunday. Perfect. That'd be very helpful. So it'll be from about two dozen people in all. Okay. Great. Great. Any other questions for Karen? Anybody? Okay. So I'm going to put a little check mark next to my endowment um, um, piece on our agenda because uh, that's very helpful. Uh, and we had three things that we really are, are still working on with our bylaws. And so one of the last things that we were working on is um, a new section for, for bylaws related to um, what we are calling the shared ministry team. It used to be, uh, I think we used to refer to the sh what, what we're calling now the shared ministry team as the team on ministry. And so we've made some changes to that. And it's a, a, actually some, a, new, a newly um, penned bylaw that we are trying to sort of sort through. Um, and so, Last year, um, when Dick was president, we we actually um, adopted, I think, or agreed to um, bringing the um, recommendations from the the prior acting team on ministry um, forward to the board to report back on how that all worked, and then making recommendations for what would become a shared ministry team. So what we have learned is now that we have a shared ministry team, but there was a little bit of hic a few hiccups in getting it up and running and started, um, mainly because of COVID and travel and summer and all of that. And so what we've asked um, Todd to do is give us a, a little update as to uh, who's on that team 
and how they see themselves as running and um, whether or not they're using the, some of the recommendations from the previous acting team on ministry. And so I'm gonna turn it over to Todd to kind of give us an update on our current status of our shared ministry team. Sure, uh, the, the members uh, that, that uh, you approved, I guess last, last uh, during the, the, the previous board's incarnation uh, were uh, uh, Dick Gammon, uh, Catherine Delavine, De Barbara Nelson, and John Beaton. So those are the four members of the team. Uh, as you said, we, we ha have had a heck of a time uh, getting people to agree to a time to meet because uh, you know we're in the midst of a lockdown and therefore everybody's always gone. <laughs> I don't know how that works. But uh, we did have a meeting, uh, our first meeting, uh, 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 several, several weeks ago now, and, and we're able to schedule a, a routine meeting uh, once a month, same same day of the week, uh, same day of the month, same time, so that we don't have to run into uh, conflicts. People will know it's there and try to schedule around it, and if they can't make it, they can't make it. Uh, we, we talked a lot about, you know, what the, what the function of the team is, and the, the, uh, I think we pretty much agreed that the, you know, the the sort of last statement of the the proposed changes uh, to to perhaps the bylaws or some other you know some other policy document. There's actually the the last part of that you know that, that Tom's helped work on the the last section of that really describes what the team does. Which I think is pretty good. Uh, I don't. I don't have it memorized, but but really effectively, it is. It is the team that is uh, somewhat monitoring the the uh, the health of our mission as a congregation, the health of our ministry, our mission, however, however you want to say that. Uh, in other words, how how are we doing? How, how are we fulfilling our mission? So in this sense, it's going to be very good for the board because it is ultimately the board's responsibility to monitor the ends of our church and to be able to report to the congregation each at the end of each year how, how we're doing on that. So this will be a, a vital tool. It's also a team that uh, that considers the relational health within the congregation, the relational health uh, uh, be between the minister and the members, between the minister and the board, between the board and the members, and so forth. Not that it uh, necessarily uh, does anything to resolve those problems, but at least uh, it, it kind of keeps its thumb on the pulse and, and is able to determine, you know, how, how are we doing? Are there any problems? Do they need to be addressed in some way? Um, and, and yeah, I think that's a, that's a pretty big job. We, we also clarified that, you know, it, it is not the, uh, the, the triangulation team. Uh, it, it, the members of the team are not, are not people that are, that are, uh, going to be the the uh, the complaint receptors that if somebody has something they want to say say to somebody they're going to go say it to this team and then they'll convey the message they're going to practice healthy uh, healthy communications and encourage people to to speak for themselves and to address uh, th their concerns directly with those that they are having them with and and if not to uh, to ask them what's holding them back from that and how they might be able to help give them the tools to to, to have a healthy congregation, a health, healthy conversation. So that's kind of what we uh, what we discussed. Everybody seemed seemed pleased with it, uh, ple pleased with that with that notion of, of the team's purpose, and, and and relieved that it wasn't going to be just sort of the, you know, a, a co coded word for the complaint section, you know, <laughs> the complaint box. They didn't they didn't want it to be that. They made that pretty clear. So. I thought that was a, a lot to sort of accomplish and talk about during our first meeting. Great. Yeah, Tom. Um, Todd, um, in the proposed <laughs> draft, it says, uh, you know, and we're just talking about a draft, it says that the team shall consist of five members. And 
That was something that Mary Giannini and I used whenever we could to have an odd number rather than an even number. And you mentioned there were four and you named the four. Do I think probably the board's gonna need some kind of a feedback from you as to whether the four is a very comfortable number, working number or whether uh, you need to move to five. Is there any reason to move to five or else just change the, the draft bylaw to four? Yeah. Uh... You know, uh, Tom, I, I wish my memory was better and I could remember why we decided four, four was going to be okay in this case. Uh, I, I know there was some, there was some problem uh, getting a fifth person and I can't, I can't remember why, but the board, the board agreed that uh, these, these four would, would suffice for now. So, uh, I, I think we can give, give uh, you know, monitor it and see how it goes and definitely give feedback. I, um, you know, it may even be that there needs to be a range in there. I, I do notice, uh, you know, I, I really like in the draft proposal, I, I really like the, the sort of mission or purpose, uh, the statement there for, for this team. Uh, I, I'm not real big on, on uh, some of the details about about voting and you know uh, voting members and non-voting members of the team that kind of stuff I, I just uh, there, there's nothing in it about well what would they vote on and, and 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 why are they authorized to vote on behalf of the congregation who hasn't necessarily elected them so there, there's a lot of issues with that um, but uh, I, I don't know if, you know that there there's nothing spelled out about what sort of decisions they would be making that they would need to vote on so uh, in, in that case, I don't think you, you, you know, we, we need to have an uneven number to break a tie, if you would. Um, so I think, for, I think four will suffice uh, myself, but we can, we can monitor it. And then if, if, if for some reason, you know, there's a decision made that no, actually we want this to be a body that makes, is responsible for making certain decisions, then we can uh, round up a, try to round up a fifth member yeah, well, that could easily be accommodated if the board wishes to in their workshop to just say a minimum of four and, and uh, you know, work with that. And the other suggestions you've made, I'm sure the board will benefit from that, too. OK, yeah, thank you. Thanks for all your, your good work on that. Very helpful. I like that um, relational health. Um, comment. I wrote that one down. So that's super helpful. And my recollection is that uh, originally we we, we said something kind of very strange about that just really didn't work out when it, when it came to putting it to practice. But I thought um, that we had changed our minds about originally there were going to be seven people um, presented to the board and then the board was going to choose five. And that just seemed completely, um, once we started to think about how that would actually work, it, it didn't work. So yeah, this yeah sounded great. There was a kind of a, initially there was a rather adversarial, uh, uh, you know, formation uh, in this where where uh, the minister would choose three, and the board would choose three, and and we could each boycott the other choices, and it's really very adversarial to begin with, and and, and it it really became problematic when, you know, I I was the one who was going to ask people if they would be willing to do that do this, yet knowing that there were going to be more people than we actually needed. And yeah. some of them would then end up being left out who agreed. Yeah. So the, the way we, what, what we did decide, and I can't remember why we decided four, four rather than five, but what I can remember is that I asked if it would be okay if I selected everybody yeah. and the board approved everybody. Yeah. So in other words, I'm, I'm naming the nominees, but I, but I choose none. And, and the, the, the board is selecting none, but they are approving everyone. And that, that seemed to me to be a fair, a fair and more practical balance. And yeah. the, board, the board agreed. Yeah, Karen. I just have um, one, one short comment. Um, if if uh, the team does uh, finally you know, decide to, to add an, a new member, just looking at the demographics of who we have here, it would be nice to have a younger member of the church, perhaps somebody who has children in um, in the religious education program. I'm not sure, but but you know that might be a consideration if you do um, ultimately um, uh, enlarge the the team a little bit. 
Yeah, good point, Karen. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions or comments or thoughts on that? Yeah, Tom. It, you know, when when we when when uh, Mary Jeannie and I uh, drafted this, attempted to draft it using what we could out of the acting team on ministry exit report, um, there wasn't anybody chosen to be on this team uh, as you now have accomplished. Would it be appropriate for that team, I guess I'm asking you, Todd, and, and the rest of the board, would it be appropriate for that team to look at at the language. I, I can see by just glancing at it while this talking has been going on that there's a good reason to have some modest, if not uh, modestly significant adjustments to the proposed language, which was made before we had anybody um, you know, in place. So something else for you to think about whether you'd want to uh, have somebody else give you some comments. Yeah, no, I think that's a, that's a really great suggestion. So yeah, in fact, I was going to actually present it to them at the next uh, at, at our next meeting just to give them some some clarity about what what you guys have been thinking uh, or or at least discussing. So yeah, it would be great for them to discuss it too and know that they have uh, some input into the outcome. Great, that's great a story. really great idea. The one thing I would say though is um, we were like halfway through that draft bylaw and we had started kind of cleaning it up. Um, and taking out some things that were kind of specific to the previous acting team on ministry and um, things that were not necessary, um, I think, in, in, a by, in a final draft of a bylaw, but, but I could see why they were in there. So it might be nice for us, you know, maybe at this next bylaws workshop, we, we, we finished, because we're halfway through it, we finished that piece from what we've learned tonight and then send it your way, Todd, and you can take it to your meeting and they can decide. Oh, great. It. Um, mm -hmm. Does that sound good? That's a, I'm getting a thumbs up from Tom, so I know I must have done something right there. Yeah, that'd but, be, that's perfect. That's, okay. Yep. Okay. So maybe we'll do that. And then we can say, um, this is really almost done. But one thing I would say is that's a really good segue into um, the next thing, unless anybody has anything else about shared ministry, but I... I want to move on to the, um, the, the last piece of one of our issues in our bylaws, and that is um, appointments for a lot of positions for, um, for people from the board, but specifically the treasurer position. Um, and one of the reasons, the reason I thought that was a good segue is it's possible that there just weren't five people to serve on the, or willing or able um, to serve on the shared ministry team, which is a, a bit of what our issue is sometimes. Um, and currently right now, we do not have an appointed treasurer. So um, I just wanted to bring this discussion forward in a official board meeting um, to talk about, I mean, it seems like Right now, we just don't have somebody on the board who wants to serve in that formal capacity. I think it's fine if we have somebody maybe even just in a um, as a ceremonial treasurer, but we do not have an appointed treasurer from either from the board or as a from a member from a member of the congregation. So I'd like to hear just thoughts on what else, um, what do you do when there is not an, a formal appointed treasurer? And um, are we okay with just um, having a ceremonial treasurer, if you will, me meaning uh, making sure that, and it could be anybody from the board, just making sure, could be me just making sure that there's um, reports sent to us from uh, the bookkeeper and checking with Rebecca to make sure that we have, which I got a lovely email from Darrell to just, hey, Lynn, don't forget to ask Rebecca about um, these reports, the, the quarterly reports. So I, I just want to open that conversation for a few minutes to what do you do when you don't have an appointee? 
I mean, one, one uh, thing that I'd just like to point out is that our current bylaws, the ones that we're operating at the present time, also makes allowance for hiring somebody who would serve as the treasurer. So that is somebody who's not necessarily, on, well, if it's a paid position, it can't be somebody on the board according to the bylaws. Uh, but if we can't find somebody uh, from the congregation, there is yet an option which is provided for by the current bylaws. We are already paying a bookkeeper. So it almost would seem redundant to me, I think, to have a, a paid treasurer. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I, I would throw out a suggestion here, and this is, this is operationally, this is a much bigger deal uh, for for us than it is for uh, for for how, how how it's configured in our in our bylaws, right? Because there, there's some real practical concerns uh, around how we deal with the numbers in the office, and, and having a, a treasurer, uh, particularly a treasurer that may change very frequently, can really cause a lot of uh, chaos. In, in in the bookkeeping. Uh, we've had some really excellent treasurers over the years and, and we, we were fortunate that pro probably for half of my tenure here so far, uh, Marie Bjork was our treasurer. And she stayed on much longer than she wanted to because we couldn't get uh, anyone qualified to, to take over. And she, and she finally left, I think after she, after she retired uh, and, and that was good because, you know, Marie was very uh, knowledgeable of bookkeeping and numbers uh, and also had a very hands-off sort of uh, respectful approach towards our, our profession, you know, our, our staff and whatnot. So a very, very wonderful relationship. But since then, we've also had some equally, equally qualified uh, people, uh, perhaps, but they changed hands very frequently. Oftentimes they, they didn't understand what it was they were supposed to be doing and what their function was and what their role was and what their authority was and what their limitations were and wanted to come in and change things, change how we, 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 we uh, listed things in QuickBooks, for example, which, which actually making changes like that apparently causes, uh, can cause a lot of havoc in, in how, how uh, we do the accounting. So I would just say that, that uh, there's a lot of stress that's caused with those with those changes, uh, particularly when a bookkeeper is just there for a year, sort of somebody saying, well, we'll fill in until you find somebody. So I, I, I personally feel that, that the best solution for this, because we, we are always going to run up against uh, the difficulty of finding a, a, a qualified person to actually be uh, a functioning treasurer, if you will. Uh, whereas uh, as uh, has been noted, we've had uh, a professional bookkeeper or accountant since before I came that is being paid. And, and there, to me, there is no reason that that, that that person in that position cannot function, uh, cannot function as the church treasurer. Uh, it would be, you know, a, cer a ceremonial title, but it would, we would be able to have it on the books that we have a treasurer because that is the person who is really already generating the reports. At that point, what we really need is to make sure that the board is getting the reports and that the that there is somebody at least on the board who understands them, right? And, and so whether that is somebody that is designated as the church treasurer that is comfortable enough with reports to be able to report them back to the congregation or not, or to the, the board or not, is, is uh, you know, not, not a major issue. Uh, we can always just send send the reports, and the bookkeeper can uh, explain, answer any questions if necessary. But to me, that is that is the solution, and I and I, I say it's the solution, it's the practical solution, because we do have that professional person in that position doing the work of what the treasurer would have done before we actually paid somebody to to take over that that big job of bookkeeping many years ago. So we, we create a, a re, not only a redundancy uh, with, with a separate treasurer, but we create uh, some conflict and chaos and anxiety in the office 
because of the quick changeover. And I think having the book, just naming the bookkeeper the, the treasurer, uh, they're already a paid person. Uh, and, and then making sure somebody on the board is comfortable with reading the reports. All right, that's my suggestion. Tom? Well, while you were talking, Todd, I was looking at the section that the board has written um, regarding the treasurer. And then one of the things they, they recently changed it to was to go make sure that the, the treasurer could, a designated treasurer, could or could not be a trustee. So that would be consistent with what you um, have said. And the, I guess the next thing that I would urge the board and Todd to do with regard to what Todd's thoughts are, is look at what the board has at this point written to describe the treasurer's responsibilities or duties and see if you be believe that um, a bookkeeper um, slash treasurer would fit that or does that definition of treasurer need to be modified to kind of fit the model that you just described if the board likes the model you described? Okay, that's, that's a good point. Yeah. And we get Rebecca in on that conversation too and then eventually Lynn, uh, Lynn, 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 our bookkeeper, I should say. Yeah. yeah. So I have a question. If we were to formally designate the person who is the bookkeeper, also treasurer, what would the difference uh, in responsibilities be? What would that person be doing when they're wearing the treasurer hat that's different from what they would be doing when they're wearing the bookkeeper's hat? And to what end? Where does the board fit in there? That's that's my question. Yeah, I... I uh... Uh, you know, my, I personally don't think there, there would be a difference. I, I think this would, uh, designating the bookkeeper satisfies our bylaws, but it, 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 it become, you know, we're talking about creating a, if we're talking about creating a ceremonial bookkeeper, put the ceremonial title or ceremonial treasurer, put the ceremonial title on somebody that's actually doing the work of the treasurer, which is, the bookkeeping and providing accurate reports to the board and, and that sort of thing. So I think they would be fulfilling the obligation of the treasurer simply in, in, the, in the duties that they're already fulfilling. We wouldn't necessarily add, uh, add anything to it. Uh, you know, the, the difference would be if you had a, a ceremonial treasurer. In other words, if we said, okay, we're going to stop trying to find people with accounting experience, and which is very frustrating and, and it's hard to do, and we're constantly looking and we're not finding anybody, uh, let's find somebody that's just ceremonial that would then transfer the reports from the bookkeeper to the board, right? In this case, we're cutting that person out, fulfilling our requirement, uh, our bylaws requirement to have a treasurer that doesn't prohibit us from having that be an employee and, and, and basically saying our bookkeeper or accountant because that position might change too from time to time uh, would serve also serve as our treasurer. So they're, they're still generating the reports that the board would need to monitor our financial welfare, uh, which would all, is also part of Rebecca's job uh, to, to make sure are accurate as, as well as, uh, to some extent, the operations team. I just had a, had a yeah. comment. We, we talked about this. Uh, Craig and I went and talked to Rebecca and Lynn, the bookkeeper, a couple of months ago. And I think it's important that somebody on the board has oversight of kind of a broad oversight of what's going on. Um, I know Rebecca and Lynn are very competent but it seems like it's still a function of somebody on the board or the board to have some oversight, whether you call that ceremonial or, or what. Um, I think there needs to be just a, a, a bit of a check and balance there. Rather, yeah, than, turning, rather the, than turning everything over to the, to the bookkeeper. Well, here, here's, the, here's the issue, Darrell, and, I, and I, I'm not arguing that that Ideally, that wouldn't be the case. So, and, and I'm not saying it can't be the case, but it goes back to Lynn's original question. What happens when we end up with a situation where we don't have anybody willing to serve to serve in that position? 
which, which is more often the case, right? So, uh, and if the board is getting the reports from our bookkeeper, uh, the board has oversight over, right? The board should be taking those report seriously and looking at them and asking appropriate questions uh, rather than a central person doing it. So I, I'm just, just sort of throwing that back back at you as, as uh, you know, we, we have, the, we're in the difficult situation of, of not being able to come up with that person. Uh, so how do we, you know, what, what do we do when we can't do that, when we can't have a treasurer? Right. We, we talked in the bylaws meeting a couple of different times about, about, having somebody on the board serve as the treasurer if nobody else volunteers. Uh, and again, to be the, uh, to be the person that, uh, that gets the reports, uh, the financial reports, ask questions if there's any questions that person has, and then brings those reports to the board. Um, so not ceremonial per se, but, but uh, we didn't think that that person would need to have a, an accounting background, just somebody that that uh, would be able to read uh, the quarterly reports and then share that information with the board. So, uh, again, uh, you know, the whole board can be responsible. It, it might still be better to have one person that's responsible. I'm not sure. Tom. Well. You really, uh, you know, I'm just looking again at this and just let me remind you what you have so far. You you have a statement that treasurer shall provide oversight regarding finances. Then you have five points. Uh, meet with the bookkeeper and the operations manager to learn about the bookkeeping system. Review each quarterly report. And frankly, that's all you've mentioned is these quarterly reports. And thirdly, participate in the finance team meetings and discussion. And fourthly, serve as a liaison to the congregation and the board on financial matters, keeping them informed. And five, present an annual financial report at the annual meeting. So you kind of, you, I mean, you could totally rewrite what your proposal is, but you really have to decide on what's a workable concept and then rewrite this. Because right now, the way this is written, it's a, it's a third person. It isn't the bookkeeper. It isn't Rebecca. It isn't the minister. So that's what you're going to have to deal with. Yeah. And that, that was my question. What are the specific work products of a treasurer that the bookkeeper does not get produce? And why do we need those? Yeah. Well, and, and maybe and, we don't. And, oh. Well, the state, the state says we do. <laughs> in, in, the, in our, the, the, is according to what Mary Giannini said, mm -hmm. one of the uh, requirements is that the uh, the board uh, have a that, that we're, we're required, according to our charter, to have a president, a vice president, and a treasurer, and that's our charter under the state. Right. So and, I guess we keep going back to to we're not doing that right now. We're not doing that right. So that's why we're stuck because we're not following what the state says we should be doing as we speak. I, I thought that the state said that we were required to have a, a president, vice president, and secretary. That's what I thought too. That's what I'm just checking on. Oh, oh. Candace, you're you're muted. Oh, Candace. Uh, I was just going to say what Catherine brought up, oh. and that I think I remember the treasurer was uh, she recommended thought it was a good idea, but it's not a mandate from the state. Okay. Yeah, the, the other point that, that Tom brought up uh, in his reading reminded me, you, you know, th there's also a redundancy in having a finance team and a treasurer, right? It, what is the finance team for if the finance team is not reporting, is not looking at those reports and reporting back to the, to the board, right? So on the one hand, you already have a group. And for some reason, it is easier to, to staff a finance team than it is a treasurer. Uh, there's something that really scary about this treasurer position for a lot of people, uh, whereas people are willing to serve on the finance team. You have, you know, three or four people that are willing to uh, to do that, and and that could very well be the oversight, the the team that helps the board with the oversight. You could even appoint a member to the board. Usually there is to the finance team, so that they're able to report back to the board about where we're at financially. Now, I, I'm. That, that I, I'm just put, putting this out because I, I think this is the solution. I'm not married to it. 
uh, if if you decide you need to have that extra layer, uh, I'm I'm certainly not going to get in the way or be offended or anything. So so Daryl, I just wanted to uh, give you that feedback too that I, I just see this as being a more of a practical solution than the best solution. So uh, if there's another way to go about it, I, I'm certainly pleased for you to do so. I think the uh, I think the board. Uh, should come up with a treasurer from internally. And so we should put our, uh, us, us board members that are currently don't have a major position should put our, uh, uh, you know, uh, put ourselves into a pool and then we just, uh, we pick one. There's a, that, I think that would be the best solution. And then we have somebody on the board who would be responsible for the finances of the church. And because they're on the board, they would be able to provide oversight, um, uh, which would not be provided by having the treasurer be the bookkeeper. So uh, I think maybe that yeah, should be the solution. Um, the, tre the treasurer is interwoven in other places in our bylaws right now, like in the endowment article 11. On section nine, it says the church treasurer shall present an annual financial report on the status of the endowment fund and the activities of the endowment fund to the board of trustees and the congregation. So that is a is a vital oversight role, you know, of a critical part of our church, the endowment. So I think I think that um, that uh, you're right that the board should designate one of you as being the treasurer. Yeah, and maybe, maybe the solution is to uh, have co-treasurers or something. My, I would be treasurer. I would volunteer for it, except I plan to be traveling next summer. So I don't, I, I won't be able to present any report to the congregation at the congregational meeting. And uh, so that's a big, that's a big problem. But I, I don't mind reading the, the quarterly reports. I just cannot do one of the main functions of the treasurer at the end. But couldn't so, we- uh, um, maybe, maybe there's a workaround here with the rest of the board members. You could designate somebody to do that for you. Yeah, I think so too, because I think one of the things that this this particular board, I mean, it's just been a um, sort of one of those things that has slipped under our radar as we were sort of getting our feet under us, um, that we were not really all that involved in, in the budgeting process at all last year. And so we suddenly got this budget, you know, pretty much right before the annual meeting and, and we're trying to prepare to answer questions from members of the congregation. Uh, and, a, a solution there, Lynn, uh, for any, any chair of a, or of a committee or a board like this, is you could designate a treasurer pro tem during a period in which the treasurer is not available. It's a simple appointment by the chair. Mm -hmm. Well, and I do think we, if we had a person, you know, acting as treasurer throughout the year, and then you decide, uh, or you're you already are aware that you're going to be gone. Um, I, I just think we were missing that piece last year, and so. I, I felt very unprepared to answer questions about the budget to the members of the congreg for the member from the members of the congregation, but I wouldn't feel that way at all. In fact, I really love um, financial reports and bookkeeping and all of that kind of stuff. And I would be interested myself if I wasn't president in being treasurer. Maybe I will next year, but I would feel much more comfortable throughout the year if if for instance, Craig decides to do this for us, I know that I will be hearing reports more regularly and it's not going to be, here you go, here's, here's a budget and you should be ready to answer some questions. Uh, we would just all feel a lot more comfortable when that time comes. And I'm happy to give um, reports to the congregation about particularly something I fully understand and, and have been made aware of as the year goes along if if your treasurer is part of your finance team you don't have to designate a pro tem you could but your treasurer who, who would presumably be the chair of the of the finance team 
could always say, I'm going to be away for this period of time. I will need you, one of you, to give the reports to the to the board. Right. Well, and that's the, the way the, it the, was. The, the, fi the finance team should have a role in in this too, or or why would we have a finance team? So. And I think that is the way it was last year, right? The the treasurer yes. um, was the chair of the finance team, and. Um, I, you know, I still just think the piece that was missing, it felt like to me, is the, is the um, board. And, and that's why I've always thought it would be a really good idea. I know that there's disagreement amongst the board, but I've always thought it's a good idea to have uh, a board member, at least somebody getting the reports, looking at the reports and presenting the reports so, so that we are... Um, fully aware because the finance team members don't come to the board meetings all the time. And if, and I don't know that they ever did last year. I don't remember that. I don't remember ever having a, a budget report. I actually agree that, that we should have a board member in that position. And I would volunteer except that I'm, I'm just uh, numbers and financial literacy are an area where I do not feel confident at all. So I, I can't volunteer for it myself. And so I think that's the only reason I've held back from saying, I think it's a great idea because I'm saying it's a great idea, but I don't, I can't do that one myself. That's okay. You can't be perfect, Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm a few points short. <laughs> Do we well, need to come to some uh, some agreement or conclusion tonight, or can we uh, can we put this off? No, I think we can keep um, talking about it. I, you know, it's something we we really do need to clean up that part of our bylaws, and it is one of the pieces that you know we keep going back to, and it's not it's still not done. So, um, well, so, so this is a board meeting. I'll make a motion uh, that we vote tonight on whether we think it's a good idea to have a treasurer be the member a member of the board i'll put that motion forward just see if anybody else uh, second i'll second may I, no may i speak to the motion i i think so yes <laughs> <laughs> okay not sure uh, since we're having the board retreat here this saturday let's let's bring it up them. I just thought since this is a board meeting and we're trying to be public about our decisions that, uh, I mean, we don't have to decide who the treasurer is, but maybe we should decide whether or not the board overall thinks that we should have somebody that's on the board that is also the treasurer. Well, uh, currently our proposed language for the bylaw rewrite says the treasurer may or may not be a trustee. So uh, I guess here we're, uh, so I'm not quite understanding your motion. Uh, the motion is just to consider what it is we want to do regarding the role of, of the dual role of treasurer and trustee because but, you know, the bylaws are only just our best thinking about what we want to present to the congregation to vote on. But can't we also vote on other things just to kind of get a sense of what the board thinks? Would this be in the form of a recommendation by the entire board, Catherine? Like, like I would just like to know <laughs> what each one of the board members thinks about should we or should we not have uh, a requirement that the treasurer be somebody that's on the board. So I don't know that we necessarily need to have a vote about that, but we can we can just ask each other, right? I mean, okay, all right, yeah. okay. I mean, you already know my thoughts. I say I would say yes. I think that it's an important piece for the board to have okay. somebody who's certainly at least aware of what's going on. 
Yeah. And and I I agree with Lynn. I think it's important that the board, uh, a member of the board, has the treasurer position. And I do too. And I do too. And I think it's really Candace and her the leadership you've shown in your liaison with the, the ops team that have set that standard. If we could have that kind of mm -hmm. report and interaction with what's going on in finance and budget, that's what you're trying to achieve, right, Lynn? So <laughs> Candace, it's on you, but yes, I agree. Well, I think it's, ideally we would have somebody from the board who would be a treasurer, but you know, in reality, what if no one wants to do it? Right. That's where I get stuck at. I, I concur that we should have the treasurer be a, a board member. And I think uh, we're likely to have somebody that's willing to do it. Again, as, as we talked with Lynn and Rebecca, it doesn't, doesn't have to be an onerous job. We don't have to, uh, certainly interfere with the work that they're doing. It's more a liaison between, between uh, the bookkeeper and Rebecca and the board and the congregation with, with some liaison with the finance team. So uh, I, think it's, I think it's likely we'll be able to find somebody on the board that would be willing to do it. Hold on one second, Tom. Let's hear from Dick, and then okay. I'll... So my personal view is, I think it's ill-advised to require the uh, that the uh, treasurer be a member of the board. I think that our current draft language that uh, Craig read uh, it works works for us. The person may be on the board, or may, may or may not be a trustee. That's my my view. Tom. Oh, j just for clarification, you know, certainly you have a set of bylaws that you're operating under right now. So what you're really talking about is what kind of a concept or principle you want to have in your uh, in your draft bylaws, which is suitable to be done in this open meeting where other people are able to listen to what you're saying and, and debating. Um, but it, as you decide, um, again, on this, in your workshop, if you decide that this is the way you want to go, either a board member or not a board member, then you're going to have to, you know, tweak the language to fit that situation, both in the finance team and in your uh, language describing the duties of the treasurer. So, so I have a question. I think under the current bylaws, I think it says the treasurer will be appointed by the board. Is that correct? Yes. So, yeah. so, so we could, you know, for this year, the board could appoint somebody that could be, uh, that could be a board member if, if Craig still wants to do it. We haven't had any volunteers in the congregation. So, so I think we could decide to do something for this year and then look at the bylaws for uh, future years. And those two are not uh, in conflict with each other. That's a good point. It, and actually my position is it's, uh, it's a good thing uh, to have the, a board member be the trustee, but it's not necessary if there's another qualified member of the congregation that wants to step up. However, I think if no one steps up, then it's up to us board members to, to uh, fulfill the state requirement. Tom, did you find the language there in the incorporation, articles of incorporation? Actually, I pulled up the... I pulled up the articles of incorporation. I did a search for the word treasurer. It doesn't appear. Well, I guess it, I guess that's not where it would be. It would be in the uh, requirements of the state for an incorporating body, I guess. That's where we oh. should look. Okay. If it was in the requirements of the state that there be a treasurer, then I'm sure that that would have been picked up during our your revision of the articles of incorporation because that would have been one of the things Mary would have uh, pointed out to you. So my my thinking, and I'm not sure exactly where to look in the state law. Uh, my thinking is in the state law that it's the a chairman or president and the secretary, and that the treasurer isn't mentioned in there. Um, but that I, I could attempt to look for that, or I could call Mary while you all are um, continuing to talk about this. 
I really like what you said just now, Craig, about, um, I mean, you know, I think this is where we have fallen short. I liked what you said about, um, you know, if we, if, if a member of the congregation wants to do that or um, volunteers to do that role, then great. Um, um, but if not, and, um, and if that person does, if somebody does do that and there's, and we still aren't feeling really informed as board members, um, we, we need to take that responsibility somewhere along the way, one of us or all of us need to say, hey, we're not getting these reports. Who, where do we go? Who should we be talking to? Right. How, can we, how can we get some more information about what we're not feeling really strong about understanding, particularly related to finances, right? That's, isn't that one of our primary <laughs> responsibilities? But I think um, it would work out great, Craig, if you, if you took that role on right now and, and then um, we're traveling and, and we all fully understood a little bit better than we did last year when it comes time to be presenting things to people, uh, I would feel very happy about that. <laughs> So Daryl is the secretary. So we have a motion on the floor. I think we need to deal with this. I don't know, Tom, do you have, well, Tom just left. So we need to deal with a motion on the floor, which I think we probably. So there was a motion, but it, there was no second that I heard. Oh, no, there was. I, I, I seconded the motion. Okay. I, I think it was really just to find out what the board thought, what yeah. each member of the board thought. So. Um, but there was a motion made by by uh, by Catherine to have uh, the treasurer be a board member, and I seconded it. So I'll, I I'll read the motion because what I was really after is just to find out what everybody thought. So you withdraw the motion? Yes. Okay. Can we do that, Tom? Well, if the um, the mo the second has to agree to withdraw the motion, I agree. Okay. Okay. Okay, Tom. And then just, I did talk to Mary and she very, without any hesitation at all said the state law requires a, a president and a secretary and uh, there's a treasurer is, uh, you know, recommended as uh, a reasonable officer or something like that, but not required. And that's why it's not in our articles of incorporation. Oh. Okay. Okay, so um, so we we know what we all think, we know what we need, and maybe we can just table this right now. I don't want to put you on the spot like that, Craig. That wasn't very kind. Sorry about that. Um, well, but, I, mean, I don't mind being the treasurer, except I can't perform one of the major functions. That's I don't know how we work. We do the workaround for that. Are you are you talking about the annual meeting? Yes. Well, I think that we can, we can definitely solve that problem when it comes time, right? Because our treasurer won't be here. And so um, a member of the finance team can step in, member of the board can step in, somebody else who fully is aware and understands what has occurred and what's, um, and the report would, would be able to step in in your place. Um, well, I mean, with that understanding, and uh, if, uh, I would uh, accept being appointed uh, the treasurer for this year with that understanding. So, Tom, do we have to um, do, do we have to do anything like have a motion and uh, I mean to do an appointee? We were supposed um, to do it a long time ago. Well. Uh, what it, what it says that you have there, the treasurer shall be appointed for a three-year term. The term will start at the beginning of the year. The treasurer may or may not be a trustee, um, blah, blah. It will work with the administrative staff. So the only thing that's a little out of whack is it's supposed to be shall be appointed for a three-year term. Of course, um, if you do that and appointment takes, you know, that means that you all have to do that by a motion would be good. 
uh, would be that uh, at the end of whatever, you know, whatever Craig decides that it doesn't work anymore, he just resigns and then you appoint somebody else. So um, I would say you could do a motion to appoint uh, Craig for uh, a three year term with the understanding that you're going to probably come up with another solution before the even the end of this uh, fiscal year. Tom, is it is it possible even to uh, to appoint him as an acting uh, it, 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 as an acting treasurer uh, for, for for an unforeseen period, so that if there is a permanent treasurer position that would actually serve three years, could, could be appointed. But but recognizing there's a vacancy right now, that that he would at least be an acting treasurer for for the continuation of this year. I think you're on to something there because. Uh, um, I don't think anybody's going to object to that. And if you recognize, I would say you recognize in your motion that that uh, something to the effect that uh, you move that uh, you know the Craig be appointed as an uh, uh, acting a treasurer in lieu of uh, not having a candidate for a full three year term or something like that. That recognizes the bylaw, and and also recognizes that you're trying to solve an immediate problem that uh, you need to handle. So that, that would be what I would think. You've got a good point, making an acting appointment, recognizing that uh, there isn't anybody who has been available for a three-year, a full three-year appointment. Okay, so I move that Craig Aldworth be appointed acting treasurer uh, in lieu of having a three-year term appointee until somebody better comes along. <laughs> no, <laughs> until somebody <laughs> willing to take three years. Not better. We'll never get anybody better. <laughs> right. We'll never get anybody better. Until, no. a, permanent until an, a permanent appointee could be. Uh, <laughs> yes, that's better language. <laughs> we don't need to go any further until somebody else comes along. Okay. When there is new bylaws adopted, then everything changes. We'll change that. Okay. So um, let me be more. Serious. I move that <laughs> Craig Aldworth be appointed acting treasurer um, in in lieu of an, a, a three year appointee um, because of a vacancy. I second it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor, if you are on the board, would you raise your hand if you're in favor of that? Hi. Thank you. Great. Okay. Congratulations, Craig. I, I'm going to instruct the office to have the file cabinet shipped to your place tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and all the undone tax returns, too. I, I could see after this nomination process why no one wanted the job. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so then, then I'm going to mark in my copy of the bylaws uh, under treasurer that there needs to be a, some a red comment that we need to do some more tinkering with the assignments thank you tom very good well oh, very good okay guys that um brings us really just about right on time to the end of um the public part of this meeting and then i'm hoping that all board members will stay with me which i and we can go into our executive session as we did last month, we're just going to continue the work of our ministerial agreement to finish that up, hopefully. Um, and this time I'm going to turn off the recording. Uh, and, uh, and then Dorothy, I will send you the time that we adjourn when we are all finished. And I'll send you the endowment um, team mission statement also. All right, guys. Good to see everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.